Hey, everybody. We're live at the Pace Studios now with Layla McCalla. Layla, thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we were stoked to host you here in the in the tape room in front of uh, the band and the Who and the Rolling Stones and, and all this stuff. And uh, it's uh, the first time we crossed paths was at, at Rockwood like two years ago, maybe. But, yeah. But uh, we stoked to host you here on, uh, on our home home turf. Thanks for... Thanks for hosting us. Yeah, totally. Um, so you're going to do three songs today off of the Capitalist Blues, which is coming out in a couple of weeks. It's out on January 25th. And can you tell us a bit about what you're going to do first? Sure. Um, I'm going to do uh, one of the songs that I feel like is, you know, the Capitalist Blues, uh, there is a, an original song that I wrote um, and ended up being the title of this record because it just perfectly summarizes sort of some of the themes um, that I'm exploring um, musically. Uh, but this is a song called Money is King. And it comes from a, um, which also is one of those themes that I'm exploring in my life. <laughs> and um, and uh, this song comes from a Calypsonian named The Growling Tiger. If a man has money today, people don't care if he has Coco Bay. If a man has money today, people don't care if he has Coco Bay. He can commit murder and get off free. Live in the governor's company. But if you are poor, people tell you, shoot, a dog is better than you. Ten lads to take down anything Whiskey cloth earring and diamond ring Send it to your home on a motorbike You can pay the bill whenever you'd like And not a soul will ask you a thing They know very well that money is king Can walk about and take a bone Foul head, stale red fish, tail and pole If it's a good breed and not too wild People will take it in mind as a child But when a hungry man goes out to beg They send a bulldog behind his leg Twenty policemen will take him down too You see how a dog is better than you Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so can we talk a little bit about the the themes? I mean, you're talking about uh, some musical themes that led you into uh, 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 capitalist blues. Can we talk a little bit about the political motive behind it also and just the climate of, of what's happening right now in this world? I mean, that sure. specifically that line, um, I'm sure you wrote it before Jamal Khashoggi was disappeared in uh uh in turkey but that mm -hmm. you can commit murder and i mean that line in that song is so yeah. applicable and i would imagine that was written well yeah. before that and you happened, can have but... you know the u.s president 
say um, that there's no way the Saudis were involved, <laughs> you know? Um, and then eventually say, but if they were, the, whatever, they're spending enough money that it doesn't matter. Exactly. And and have that completely be accepted um, as an answer, which I feel like is, that that's what's new, I think, about the political environment today is that there seems to just be a, a general sense of impunity. That the rottenness is completely on display and people don't even bother to pretend any longer. Right. Well, people justify it. People feel that it's justified, which is even worse than pretending that it's not happening. You know, it's like, well, this is why this is right. Um, and yeah, you know, I, it's funny that you that you bring that up today. I, I was, um, you know, you get the news like information stuff that pops up on your iPhone or your smartphone. Your flip phone and, um, in some cases. Your flip phone if you're really, really cool like Dave, our guitar player. But um, <laughs> uh, I read something that said, uh, something popped up and it was like, you know, Mike Pence and other top Trump aides to receive $10,000 bonuses, $10,000 um, like a salary increase for this year, like during a government shutdown. I mean... You can't make this shit up, you know. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah it's and it's depressing it's... because you know most of us are have nowhere near that sort of um, power um, financially, for sure, but politically as well. And so um, it's a really it's a really interesting time. It's funny because I recorded these songs, you know, in the spring of two thousand seventeen, and I was feeling like this is the right time for this music to come out. <laughs> and now it's, you know, two years later and I, uh, I went from being a family of three to a family of five. I gave birth to twins about seven months ago and I'm getting back out on the road and I'm like, oh my God, this is the right time to release this record. And, you know, I hope I don't feel that way in the next couple of years, but we'll see. <laughs> Although, I mean, it seems pretty likely. It seems likely that the context of what you're writing is going to change and probably not for the better in the near term, but... Uh, right, right. It will I, I be think applicable. That, I think actually a lot of these songs, especially the, um, you know, what's different for me about this record is that I wrote most of the songs on the album, whereas my first two albums was a lot of traditional music that I sort of arranged. And, you know, that's one of the things that I really love about um, exploring traditional music and older songs is like, you know, how they apply to the world today. And, um, and, it it still works, you know. These these themes have existed for a long time, and they, they just have a a new face. Well, it sounds great so far. Can you tell us a little bit about the second song you're going to do from uh, Capitalist Blues? Sure. Um, this is a song that I wrote. Um, it's called "Heavy as Lead," and um, I wrote this song uh, thinking about my my daughter who's now four years old and um, completely healthy. But uh, when she was a year old, uh, we found that she had elevated levels of lead in her blood due to peeling paint um, on our doors and windows in our house. And um, I had to figure out, uh, you know, the quickest way to sort of rectify that situation for her health. Um, and, and so I wrote this song sort of thinking about um, systemic issues, you know, infrastructural uh, dysfunctionality in our country, um, which sounds really lofty, but, you know, basically uh, I feel that we put so much money into war and, um, and hardly any into our, our roads and bridges and, you know, houses that are falling apart and um, literally... Um, poisoning our, our children. And, uh, and so, you know, I think a lot of my songs come from this very personal place. And then I start to see how, um, how many people are, are sharing that experience. And, um, and so I was thinking a lot about the parents of kids in Flint, Michigan, and, and, and how they might be processing um, the lack of action um, on this issue as well. So this one is heavy as lead. Three, one, two, three. 
This old house might swallow us whole. Begins with our family, and soon it comes round to our souls. We're trying to grab hold of what we can't control.
Sounds great. Thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about who, uh, whether whether musicians or whether I mean any anybody across the culture um, who is spreading a message of of protest of uh, of social activism and is I mean who are you inspired by that um, that is really doing. Hmm. Something important right now. I mean, whether it's whether it's musicians or not. I mean, anybody. Um, I am, I have a lot of people that are inspiring me. Um, I always, uh, think of my friend, uh, Alinda Lee Sagara, hooray for the riffraff. Um, yeah. you know, I love, uh, you know, what she's putting out. Um, I think about Rhiannon Giddens, who's also uh, a friend and a colleague of mine. We have a record coming out in February, actually called Songs of Our Native Daughters, exploring, um, Black women's narratives in the United States and history. Um, is that record as Carolina Chocolate Drops? Or no, is it as just no, the it's a. Com- it's the the band is called Our Native Daughters, and um, uh, it's coming out on Smithsonian Folkways. Um, and you know, I, I just I I really admire people who are um, you know starting conversation about systemic issues of you know. Um, class inequality and racial uh, racism um, and, you know, poverty and um, xenophobia. (laughs) I feel like that really resonates with a lot of the things that I think about. Um, Who else? Who else? Who else? this is, I hate these kinds of questions because it's like, hey. I know. Well, I should have said something about it before when we were. How, how in tune are you? Um, but those those two women came to mind immediately. Those are great answers. And, I mean, um, I would have yeah. said if somebody put me on the spot, I would have said Michael Moore and Tom Morello. But those are like super, right. super obvious answers. It's true, but it's yeah. obvious. I like your answers. Better. I also, I, I, you know, Caetano Veloso, who's a Brazilian artist, yeah. has been one of my biggest inspirations. Um, you know, he was put in exile in the sixties and who knows, maybe he'll be exiled again in 2018 (laughs) considering this, uh, political environment. But, um, we had just yesterday, we had an Egyptian dude who's exiled to Sweden. He can't go back to Egypt. This dude, Rami Assam did a session here, uh, yesterday. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. He got jailed and tortured for the, during the, uh, um, Arab spring uprising in Egypt in 2011. Like he was in the middle of Tahrir square doing the thing and got, just yeah you know reaped the consequences of, yeah. of having done that now he's in sweden and uh not quite sure where i'm going with that but it's i mean it was but uh, that's uh, that's a real thing you yeah. know to well, be in so exile to even today be really careful about what we said on this broadcast because there are you know people listening well but people actively back in egypt who could be affected by it oh uh, right yeah and yeah, it was it was heavy right it's a it's it's a big responsibility to to speak out in in a sense, you know. Um, here we have freedom of speech, and I'm pretty sure the Trump administration would love to do away with that. But um, you know, thankfully, that's in our constitution. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> um, you be free, be free, Brad. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna. I'm doing my best. We're all doing our best. I think we're doing great right now. Um, it sounds awesome so far. And can you tell us what you're going to do third off of the capitalist blues? Sure. Um, this is a song, um, by a, a very well-known Haitian singer named Coupe Cloué, um, whose music I started to, um, really get into the past few years. Um, and he had a band called, before he became famous as Coupe Cloué, he had a band called Trio Select. And I've been kind of obsessed with their records and with their sound and, I always heard this song and was like, I really want to do that song. I don't know exactly what it means. La Vie Vieux Neg is the name of the song. And that means in Creole, my family's from Haiti. Playing Haitian music and singing Creole is a big part of, um, you know, what I do and big part of what motivates me to play music in the first place. And um, and so uh, my dad helped me translate the song. Hi, Dad. Um, and... Uh, 
it's la vie vieille in Creole means the the life of an old man. And so this song is talking about an old man that's been living in poverty his whole life. And it says, the soles of his shoes are so thin that they're as thin as crepes. And if the world is round, it's not his fault. Um, we do what we have to do to get by on while we're here on earth. And, um, but as soon as money comes in, it's spent. L'argent pas fait boule, no poche malheure. Money doesn't make piles in the pockets of poor people. La vie vient et calme ses surrêves son œil, même si la terre est ronde, c'est pas faute malheure. La vie vient et calme ses surrêves son œil. Même si la terre est ronde, c'est pas faute malheure. La jambe pas fait pour nos poches malheure. Nous fait pour nous vivre sous la terre bénie. La jambe pas fait pour nos poches malheure. Nous fait pour nous vivre sous la terre bénie. La vie vient et comme j'ai sur rêve son oeil, même si la terre est ronde, c'est pas faute malheureuse. La vie vient et comme j'ai sur rêve son oeil, même si la terre est ronde, c'est pas faute malheureuse. Là, je pas fait pour nos poches malheureuses, nous fait pour nous vivre sous la terre bénie. Là, je pas fait pour nos poches malheureuses, nous fait pour nous vivre sous la terre bénie. Mes amis, là, je pas fait pour La vie vient et comme j'ai su rêve son oeil, même si la terre est ronde, c'est pas faute malheureuse. La vie vient et comme j'ai su rêve son oeil, même si la terre est ronde, c'est pas faute malheureuse. La jambe a fait pour la poche malheureuse, nous fait pour nous vivre sous la terre bénie. La jambe a fait pour la poche malheureuse, nous fait pour nous vivre sous la terre bénie. Mes amis, la jambe a fait pour All right, that was great. Thank you. I meant to do this earlier, but you guys sound outstanding together. Can we introduce everybody? Absolutely. Over here, that's Pete Olenchu on the bass, Sean Myers on drums and percussion and tambour. And this is um, Dave Hammer on the guitar. All right. That sounded great. Uh, so people can see you um, tomorrow at uh, at the Bitter End in New York as part of Winter Jazz Fest. Yeah. Um, doors at, is the Doors at 7, is that true? I think we're going Show on at, at seven. 7. Show at 7. Yeah. At the Bitter End. And all the all the tour dates out. They've got stuff announced through April, I think, of this year. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's all up at com And... Uh, that's true. Thank yeah. you so much for coming and doing this and have a great show tomorrow and tour safely uh, throughout the year. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Thank you.